Good afternoon, gentlemen, and welcome to the shop. What we have in front of us here is my 1994 Honda 300 four tracks, four wheel drive. Uh, you've seen this machine in a bunch of my other videos, but uh, today, what I'm thinking about tackling is throwing this big red camshaft in it. So you guys that don't know what I'm talking about when I say big red camshaft, uh, this is a 94 model 300, so it's got a bit of a milder cam than the original 300 had. Uh, the 88s for sure had a bit more aggressive camshaft in them. And I'm thinking the 89, 90s, and 91s also had it. Although some guys seem to like to argue with me with that. I don't know for sure, to be honest with you. But all I know is when I go on Partzilla or whatever and look up the part numbers, the 88 to 91 have all the same part number for the camshaft, and 92 and on are different. So maybe I'm an idiot, I don't know. <clears throat> but uh, that's beside the point. So the 88s for sure had a hotter camshaft and it's the exact same camshaft that was used in the 250 Big Red uh, three wheelers. So what you can do is you can get your hands on one of those and you can throw it into your 300, your later, later model 300 and it should give you uh, an increase in power. <clears throat> now. The part where it gets a little bit foggy for me, because I haven't done this before, <clears throat> but the research that I have done on it, some guys are saying that uh, it's all top end gain, mid range to top end gain, and you're not gaining anything on the bottom. Some guys have said you actually lose some on the bottom end. A little bit less torque, a little bit more power. Uh, I'm hoping that's not the case because that's definitely not what I want. That would be fine on a motor that has like an 18% gear reduction in it or something like that where a little bit more engine speed is kind of the norm. But this machine is basically bone stock. Uh, the only thing I'm running on is, is a set of 25 inch tires. So what I really want is, uh, is low end power. I don't care about mid range or top end too much. So other guys are saying it's all around power or a bit more low end. So I don't know. I, <clears throat> I mean, I can go off what they say, but it's always better for me to just figure it out for myself. So I've got quite a bit of seat time on this machine and other 300s too for that matter, but this is a pretty good uh, kind of a base control comparison because this is a bone stock machine on 25 inch tires. So I know how this feels right now. Uh, we'll throw in the camshaft and I guess I'll report back maybe in a later video of what I think of the big red cam swap. Because I mean this is a dirt cheap swap, right? I might have paid, oh, I didn't pay anything for this camshaft. I got a bit of a parts strike I had around, right? So <clears throat> I got zero dollars into this mod so far, provided I don't break anything. But, I mean, you can find them on eBay, you can find guys part of that. I mean, what's it going to cost you? 20, 40, 50 bucks? Maybe. So, we'll throw that in there and fire up and see what it does. I'll uh, take you guys along for the ride a little bit. I'm just using my iPhone for a camera. I don't feel like setting up the whole tripod or nothing this afternoon. So, uh, let's get started. Alright, so I pulled the tank off. I'm just looking at what we got to do here. Uh, I think I can get away with leaving this uh, air intake on there. It's been a while since I did this, but uh, yeah, oh yeah. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to unbolt that top motor mount. See right there, that's going to come off. And then we can just undo those small bolts that are there. I think on this side I get to do the under the oil line. Comes to the rocker box, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so this here's gotta come off. Uh, that's fine, that's on the head. Just gonna do this and this and this this 
that and do this motor mount. It should be enough room for that to lift up and into there. So uh, let's get at her. Yeah, we got no time for messing around today, boys. Got to break out the big guns. <coughs> All right, quick sidetrack on the video here. Uh, anytime you're taking apart motors and stuff like that, it's a good idea to mark out where your bolts go. So you don't get them mixed up because I mean these are all different lengths and sizes and stuff, right? So what I did is I pulled the cover off. I left all the bolts in and I was able to do that. I put it on top of this piece of cardboard and I just tap each bolt with uh, a hammer and it makes a dent in the cardboard. And then I traced around it with a sharpie and I made some reference marks on it like front and rear and that's where the spark plug side is and cam end cap and whatever else, right? So. After that, I pulled the rocker cover off. I drilled out the holes, because that's the easiest thing to do. So I just drilled out each hole with a drill, and then I could pull out each individual bolt and stick it into the corresponding hole. And now I know exactly where each one uh, is supposed to go. So what I was thinking I might do, because these 300s are pretty popular, is I might make up a drawing that you guys can print off and you can just drill out your own on a piece of plywood or a piece of cardboard or whatever. Just something quick and easy so you don't have to do that. Uh, yeah, so maybe I'll do that in the future, but if not, whatever. So that's the rocker box right there off the motor. Which brings us, of course, to... Da -da -da -da. Our camshaft is exposed on the motor. We're all uh, ready to go. So uh, the next step in this process is to disconnect that there. That's your uh, cam chain tensioner. So once I back that off, I will have this chain loose enough where I can hopefully slide the camshaft out. But uh, we'll see. See, this motor's been apart before. I don't know if you can see it or not. But you can see right there. All this silicone. So that's when you know you've used too much silicone is when it's inside the motor like that. Like it shouldn't be like that. So we'll clean all that up and we'll put it back together right anyway. So. Alright. All right, so I got the uh, camshaft out of that 300. And I mean, I'm starting to think, is this even gonna work? I mean, I guess, well, they must work, I guess, because guys are switching them, but I mean, just take a look at these, would you? You notice any differences here? I mean, this diameter and this diameter are the same. I mean, I tried to kind of crudely measure the, the lobe heights or whatever, and I mean, they're like spot on identical. I can't tell any difference that way. Uh, the difference is on the end here. I'll stand them up. You can see. Yeah, you can see it. This cam has this extra bit on the end of it. This is the big red cam. It has this extra bit on it. Uh, this part rides in the head. That's what holds it. It rides in the head. This part is what sticks into that uh, end cap. So, I mean, this isn't crucial, I guess. I'm still curious if it's going to work, and I don't know if you can tell, I'll stand up this way. Uh, like so. See if you can tell any difference at all. In the profile of it. I mean, it kind of looks like this big grid cam might be different, but I mean... If it is, it's going to be so minor. 
So yeah. I think greater cam seems heavier too. Like I don't know if that'll play a bit of a role in like the like rotational mass or whatever in the top end and the valve train, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty skeptical about this. If it's gonna add any power at all or just yeah, I don't know. But we'll install it and see what happens. As long as it works, then I don't care. In the meantime, if it does work, I can send this out to webcam or something like that and get a a real performance profile ground in it. Something that really will make more power. So uh, let's continue on here. So I got the uh, big red <coughs> camshaft sitting in there. Uh, it was super easy to retime it because uh, I didn't let the sprocket come off of the chain. I didn't rotate it at all. So it kind of pretty much kept in time. Uh, you pretty much just got a 50-50 chance of getting the bolt holes right. And I got it right in the first try. Uh, basically what I mean by that is the camshaft could be flipped 180 degrees out pretty easily. But uh, we got it right. It's at TDC. Cam lobes are up. Uh, yada yada yada. She's good to go. So we can start putting her back together. I'm just going to clean up the uh, gasket surfaces, use some spray on gasket, and uh, put her back together. And then uh, I guess I got to adjust the uh, valves to big red spec, and it should be good to go. Alright, so uh, we're into day two of this uh, Monday afternoon project. Uh, the camshaft is in, I'm not really 100% sure where I left off, but the uh, big red camshaft is in the top of the head, and we got our valve cover over here on the bench, painted black for uh, more HP sauce, and I polished up, well, I guess it's a bit of a stretch. I made them shinier than they were. The uh, valve covers, or uh, valve access ports, or whatever you want to call them. So, uh, the paint's all dry on that. I got the bolts ready there. We'll just throw this back on right quick. Uh, we'll leave these off for now. Um, then we can adjust the valves and fire it up, see what happens, see if she blows up. So, uh, let's get at her. Alright, so as you can see, we got her all back together. Seat's back on, tank's back on, connected the gas, put the uh, air cleaner tube back in, all that stuff. Uh, just about forgot to uh, let the cam chain tensioner back out. That would have been pretty bad. Um, Probably would have jumped timing and bent the valves and all that good stuff, but uh, I remembered. So I didn't actually adjust the valves on it. Uh, turns out I can't find my feeler gauges. I'm hoping, well, I know it will be. It's pretty close anyway. It should be good enough. Uh, the valves might be a little bit noisy on it, but. Uh, We'll find out. So let's uh, start her up here. I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's 300 for you. First stir, first press of the button, and she fires up. Uh, yeah, so all that's left to do now is just a little bit of fine tuning, I guess, and test her out. So I'll report back in a later video, see what I think of the big red uh, camshaft. So uh, if you like my videos, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. So earlier in the video, <clears throat> I misspoke a bit when I was talking about pulling this off. This is actually another one I have. But I think I said that I was going to pull this right off of the cylinder and that would release the cam chain well the truth is you don't actually have to pull it right off uh, there's a bolt in the end of it here 
Very loose. You remove that bowl. Just imagine this is in the side, in the side of your cylinder still. So you loosen off that bolt and you take a small screwdriver. Of course, this one is a genuine Massey Ferguson. It doesn't have to be. And you just got to rotate it clockwise. And you can see it pulling it in. Rotate it clockwise and then when it bottoms out, just give it a nice little turn a little bit further and it'll lock it in place just like that. And uh, when I said later on in the video that I almost forgot to release the cam, all I had to do was stick the screwdriver back in the hole and back it off. And there it comes. So if you're taking apart one of these old Hondas and you're not sure how to do that, well now you know. Just like that.